thank you very much, Chair. Chair. Um, if I could, I suppose, uh, just to welcome, I suppose, Ms. Tracy Riley and Ms. Maria Joyce and Mr. Bernard Joyce. And uh, Tracy, well done again on your exams and, and receiving the degrees. It's great altogether. It's, it's such excitement. And uh, Bernard, I know we met actually just last week. <laughs> um, I mean, we had an engagement, I know, with young Fine Gael who reached out and spoke with uh, the Irish Traver movement. And I suppose it was about sort of, um, you know, issues that are affecting Traver youth in particular and uh, some of the concerns that you've raised here again today too. So it was a really lovely opportunity to get that chance to speak with you and to hear sort of your concerns. Um, I have spoken with Senator Eileen Flynn as well. I know in relation to the amendments that are coming through in the Traveller Culture and History Bill. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I suppose I would be very supportive as Fine Gael's spokesperson for education, further and higher education, research, innovation and science. Um, I know that in your submission, I think as well, it was mentioned about unconscious bias. And I've spoken about that previously and how it is so crucial that we understand that we all have a bias and it's about how we manage it and how we deal with it. And in our committee over the last number of, of weeks and months, we've been dealing with bullying and how children can sometimes really be um, I suppose, picked out if they're seen as different. And so it is really, really important that we have uh, these early measures, educational measures in there from primary school time, you know, as well. Um, just some of the questions, if I may, and again, very conscious of the time and keeping an eye on the clock. Um, but if I might uh, just, we're here to discuss, I suppose, inequality, digital divide and reduced timetables. Um, I know, uh, Bernard, you just mentioned 1 million students. You're so right. We have about 4,000 schools altogether, about 3,000, uh, you know, about 3,200 or so primary and the rest, I think, second um, but on that, you said 11,000 students are primary and that only 3,000 maybe go to secondary school. And then I think as well, you were looking at the numbers drop off as well. And I'm, I'm, I'll open this up to the speakers as well. But just can I ask you what type of role models or maybe what type of measures do you think would encourage uh, more retention of children, uh, I suppose, going into secondary school is the first thing. So it's always those transition points, isn't it, from primary to secondary and from maybe junior cert to, to the next modules, you know, to the senior cycle. Um, maybe what measures could be put in place, what role models or how can we support that more? Because we already have children in that are, you know, that are learning. So how do we keep them? And then also I can understand that sometimes there's cultural differences at different ages, particularly with uh, young marriages and so on in traveller culture. But um, I suppose opening it up and you've spoken as well about the FET uh, and, and Tracy, sorry, you spoke more so on this. So apologies. I know you spoke a little bit more on the dropout, but just on FET and further and higher education, uh, particularly for young women and traveller women, I suppose if I could ask Tracy then a little bit about the how do you think we could encourage uh, women in their early 20s to come back in to maybe do an apprenticeship programs or do an FET. I know in Banaslow with the College of Further Education and, you know, we have nursing and healthcare and it's really popular and we've had an awful lot of students coming through there uh, and, and from travelling backgrounds as well. So it's been very positive and popular. Just on the digital divide, I mean, you referenced, I know, a number of supports funding that came through from Minister Simon Harris, 300,000. I know that we've had funding there as well for third level for laptops and so on under the digital divide. About 15 million that's been allocated for students with disadvantage. I suppose just uh, access to space is a very big thing. And uh, I suppose that I think, Tracy, you mentioned that as well. And I might ask Maria, just very much appreciate what you said out there about the early years education, just in your last contribution, I think, with Deputy Alira. Um, I suppose if I could just ask you, you know, there, there's been a lot that we've done, I suppose, previous government and this one into looking at affordable childcare and, uh, you know, how to support, uh, I suppose, you know, just how to support making sure that families can get affordable childcare. But I suppose in this instance, it's about how do we support people getting back into education? So I might just ask you um, that you've given, I think, just a number of points there, but just is there anything else that we can do there to encourage older people coming back into education again? Thank you very much. And if I might ask Bernard maybe first and then Tracy and Maria, thank you. Okay. Um, Ashley, it was it was absolutely lovely meeting with, with yourself and young Finney Gale and um, you know, and I know um I did I did indicate that was um, you know, for ourselves the first time that we were ever invited into um, you know, that, that space. So it was a really welcome to conversation discussion. Um and um, good energy and momentum, but um, just 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 on the question, just in terms of um, um, you know on role models within um, second level education, um, I, I, I would say look, you know Tracy's here, and the fact that Tracy's here and, and has done her degree, and Marie and many others, including myself, 
Um, and the fact that we're sitting here and having this conversation gives credence to the importance of education and why it's important. But the other side of that is that um, for, for many of us, it's, it's been a personal challenge in terms of going through the, you know, the, the education system. And in some cases, there's a legacy within education as well um, in terms of the past. And it's a kind of, a, I would say, it's a, it's, it's a dark history in terms of how travels were segregated from the wider society and, and specialised schools and, and you know, structures. Um, and really did wasn't really regressive or progressive in any way. Um, and there's, there's examples of that even now in Canada in terms of, you know, in, in terms of Native, Native Americans. So travels were very much treated in a very similar fashion. So we were removed from the general population, put into travel schools and taught very much around, the, you know, in terms of the settled education. Um, and uh, so when we kind of move forward, further forward, um, I think it's important, one, to remember that, and two, that we don't want to revert back to that. So that's why it's really important that um, that it's not just about the role models, it's about the opportunities and supports and structures that are in place for people who want to go on to third-level education or, or finish second-level education. And the way that you can do that is by put, putting in investments, putting in structures, and making the environment within the school a welcome, inclusive, supportive environment. It's hard enough to learn but it's a lot more challenging yeah. to face bullying because of identity. If yeah. you're not learning about your culture and your history, and you know, and yet you do feel within a school that you're an outsider within it. And what we want to try and do is reverse that and make the school a more inclusive place for every child, including members of the travel community. So that's really, really important. And there can be other challenges in terms of gender as well to make sure that you know that young women are supported within education, to make sure that the structures are there. And that there's no reason why like people have this kind of notion that, you know, um, that with an education or with, you know, as in a particular position, um, you know, that you can't have both. Like, you know, so you can have an education and you can have your identity. It does not. You don't pick one or the other. And you can also have a career on top of that. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, and that's why it's important, Senator, like, you know, that we have now senators like Senator Eileen Blaine and that we have others who are studying law. And, you know, and, you know, and that we were not tunneled into um, a particular path, but we're in the public, private and, you know, and um, third sector, that there's opportunities available. To us. So I think with Mr. That Joyce, point, if you could allow the other two, uh, if you, Mr. Joyce, if you could allow the other two witnesses just uh, to, to give a reply to, um, to um, the senator. Thank, Thank you very you. much, actually. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. I'm actually not every time I think the phone's back off a few of Bernard's are very similar to be honest with you but I think where sure. it comes to role models I'm hoping that um, travellers will look at the likes of myself Eileen Flynn sure. other people who have come through it you know um, I think where it comes with personal challenges and you just kind of think that um, like it being a, maybe a cultural thing with traveller women or men leaving school early because of you said ma marriage or something's within the culture in fact, at times it can be true and it can't be true because I didn't, I, I left school at a very young age due to, as I said, isolation, marginalisation and we put in a special class for additional supports, actually, that I didn't need. You know, I'm missing out on valuable subjects. So it's trying to actually encourage people to put them back into education, to get them to see the value of education. And yeah. all my ability, I will do that going forward if I can. But we still can't forget the experience that those young people have been through within the education system. Like within school, I was told, like, what did you come back for? Like, it's not as if you're going to, you're not going to do well, basically, you yeah. know? And that kind of just managed me, very left confidence. I left, never come back and was never looked for, to be honest, you know, to even come back into school or anything like that. So I think all those past, like these experiences, and I'm sure many other travellers can reflect in it as well. It's kind of hard to get around, Ashley, you know, and to try and encourage them to go back into education. There still is a very high hope of that, maybe by linking through organisations and that and trying to make links to the young people that's out on the grounds and that, you know. It can happen. It happened to myself. I was very much empowered and encouraged by um, courses and stuff that I've done with Paddy Pine that led me that pathway into Manu. So it is it definitely right. it is possible. But there again, like, you just can't forget really what's happening in the past. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh